Hello again, guys. Um, this is the fourth video, fourth lesson for PvP, um, specifically fighting other players. Um, so, I am still on this account on server 366. Um, I just built these in the last video, so the equipment is still on them, roughly. Um, I kind of thought about it in the middle of a uh, before I was about to record this, that kind of the way that I pick chips and subs work together. So this is going to be a video that's combining both chips and subs. Um, and then the next video after this will be aircraft. All right. Um, and for some reason, I actually get chips and sub question way more than I get aircraft questions anyway, even though I think aircrafts are more complex. Um, so the reason why I'm doing these videos or doing this video together um, between ships and subs is because they work a lot more in tandem with one another because um, subs are a lot a little bit more versatile and you can use your subs to help your planes or your carrier. Um, I guess chips do the same thing. So they both do the same job. Um, but it depends on the carrier, and there's not one sub that you're pretty much going to want to use. Um, although, for aircraft setup, <laughs> it's real easy. For aircraft setup, uh, as much as people are going to hate me for saying just this, for an aircraft setup, this sub. <laughs> that's all you need. It's literally just the U2A. Uh, you buy, get as many of them with shards. You can get them totally for free. That's the beauty of this one too. Uh, if you are using an aircraft setup, you are using this sub, and that's that's the long and short of it, right? Um, understanding this screen is really important for both aircrafts and for subs, um, and just kind of the battle as a whole, right? So if you think of the battle, here's your carrier, right? There's three slots: one, two, three. Um, your warships, there's one, two, three, one, two, three, okay, going across. Whichever slot this sub is in, it buffs the plane that's in this slot with Stimulant, Hawkeye, and Charge. Stimulant increases damage, Hawkeye increases accuracy, Charge increases attack speed. What I say in the last video about attack speed for aircrafts, if you are attacking second, you will lose. If it's two, air or two aircraft attack setups fighting each other, Whoever has the higher level, assume all equipment is equal, equal level, equal damage, equal setup. Whoever has more attack speed will win. Okay, um, it's just whoever attacks first, and you're going. It's it really is that simple. If you have everything else is the same, whoever attacks first wins. Um, which is why charge is so important. I don't like using charge or Hawkeye chips because most people that are using attack setups use this submarine. Um, and it's totally free. Um, there are other options. You don't have to use that one, but for the most part, if you look at any, even big spenders, they're pretty much just running three plus three versions of this sub, the Type U2A. Um, they're just running three plus threes of this, and that's that's all they're using. You can use, if I go to like the super ones with like the six star subs and stuff, let me see, come on. Um, super subs, what the? What the heck is that? Come on. Come on. You got it. And if it's not working, I don't know. Okay, there we go. Um, sometimes people use this one, and then they throw on a charge chip, because it also has Hawkeye, and it has Stimulant, and if you can get it, if you're a big spender and can get it to plus three, it has more rounds and way more accuracy. Plus, it kind of debuffs them and reduces their attack. So this goes, this goes against their Stimulant, so sometimes that helps, and it buffs your warships too, so it hits both slots here. Um, so sometimes people use this one with a charge chip, but for the sake of your money and your time, just go with the U2A. It's roughly the same thing, and it's 180 submarine shard, basic submarine shards, and you can just get it for free. <laughs> just get three of these, polish them up um, as much as you can, and then once every time, and then every time you get two more of them, take one of them to plus one, get two more, take the other one to plus one, get two more, take the other one to plus one. Then you have to get another plus one to make one of them plus two, and then do the same thing. So just keep them, polish three of them, and then just keep merging the unpolished ones you get into the polished ones. Don't, do not merge your polished ones together. All right. Um, the big thing with these, with subs and chips, the benefit of them is they 
proc these skills or trigger. So the, this, the game uses the word trigger here. These skills trigger on your carrier or the carrier slot. So they're either affecting the carrier itself or they're affecting your plane. And that's chips or subs. Um, so if I'm going to, like, say the Nyx here, right? This is a Dodge carrier. It's a warship-based setup. Um, I'm not going to kill them with my aircraft. So I need the uh, I need the carrier to survive. Okay. So the chips that I'm going to use are not to buff my aircraft damage. All right. The chips that I'm going to use on this are going to be to allow my Nyx to survive long enough for that my warships to attack because the chips do not buff your warships so it, you know you're not going to get anything out of that the chips that I'm going to use are entirely there to protect this and to have it live long enough so that my warships can then return fire because their aircraft are coming first in the order of the battle um Bulletproof coating increases carrier defense, which actually it doesn't change. It doesn't affect the dodge now. It doesn't affect your dodge on this screen, but in battle it actually does. In battle, it'll take the bulletproof coating into effect here and increase your armor by 25 if it triggers with 81% chance to trigger. It increases your defense by 25. That actually does get recalculated into more dodge. Okay, Phantom. It increases your dodge by 69%, 100% trigger rate. Four rounds, it's pretty straightforward. More dodge on my carrier means I'm not on a dodge carrier specifically, means I'm going to dodge more attacks, um, even at higher accuracy, so that my, can, my carrier can live longer. Um, so this one gives me more dodge plus defense if I get hit. This one gives me more dodge, so I get hit less. Same thing, so that's I'll have that in each slot. All right, and so the slot one, two, and three, is really really important let me see if I have any um, all right well I'll go over I have no idea how oh, he attacked okay Queen Elizabeth so let's see this guy hit me why not okay cool so I'm gonna play this so that I could show you how the how everything works for the first thing to happen in a fight is your chips are gonna trigger hopefully this actually plays maybe it won't It might have been so long ago that it's not going to do it. All right, well, maybe this one, hopefully. There we go. Okay, that other one was so long ago. All right, um, I'm going to have to slow this way down. No, it's already at half. Okay, so the first thing that's going to trigger is going to be the chips. Mine went. So dodge is going to happen, last stand triggered, barrier triggered, and bulletproof coating on this slot. Next thing, then my subs go. Look at that, a plus one, U2A, a walrus, which I have no warships, so that's not going to help me, and a Yasen class. I have no warships, but it's going to add dodge and purify on that one. Okay, so it will help, but if you see, now all of this is buffed up. Stimulant, Hawkeye, and Charge are helping my TU-95. It's going to one-shot the person that attacked me, um, and then the fight's going to be over. But my planes would then go, their planes would then go, and then that's how the fight goes. So anything on this slot is only affecting this carrier. If it's defensive or if it's offensive, it's only affecting this plane. In the second, if in this slot, in the second slot, it's only effect, uh, anything offensive is affecting the plane. Anything defensive is affecting the carrier. And third, third slot, same thing. Um, and it's only applicable to that one slot. Um, so if I go to, sure, if I go here, right? Imagine this is my setup. This is slot one, slot two. So slot one is here. Slot two is here, slot three is here, okay? I'm not going to change the ships around or anything like that. Um, just for purposes of this video, right, that matches with, if I go to the submarine, right? Oh, this is perfect, actually. The submarine view is probably the best way to show this. Um, some of you might already know this, but those of you that are newer might not. These three slots, notice how there's a plane here, okay? These three slots are what happens on your aircraft carrier, 
warships, warships. And that's how it's set up. Like when uh, the match co or when the, the fight plays out in the replay, this is how everything's lined up. Um, and it goes back to front. So whoever's attack speed is higher, or if you're attacking, your attack speed is higher than their counter attack speed. You're going to attack first. It goes from left to right, front to back. So attack, attack, attack is left to right, attack, attack, attack. And then your warships actually do the same, front to back, left to right. This attacks first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth. Okay, and actually I don't know if, now that I'm doing this, I don't think you guys can see the mouse that's playing out, but hopefully you can. Um, but yeah, so they, they actually attack in that order. Um, the first submarine here is only affecting this slot. Notice that there's nothing on the two warships ahead of it. The first, the U-2A, is the stimulant Hawkeye in charge. It's only going to affect that plane, the TU-95. The next plane that goes is not getting those buffs. The next plane that goes is getting literally no buffs because there's only reflection, coding, urgent repair, or urgent support and repair on the walrus sub. So only my warships and my carrier are getting defensive buffs um, on that second plane, so there's no plane buffs on there. And then the third one is the same thing. It's only going to affect my carrier, not affect my planes at all. All right, and this debuff is affecting their plane. So if they had stimulant in this slot, this top right slot here, um, if they had stimulant there and the EMI hit, then the EMI is going to reduce their damage in that slot. So it's going to go against that stimulant in their slot. All right, so that's how that plays out on subs um, when the fight plays out. And chips, same thing. Like I said, on this carrier, because I'm on the Nyx, you're focusing entirely on um defense specifically armor so you can get more dodge dodge more attacks survive more attacks so that then your warships can return fire and do more damage um all of these chips on here are going to have to be uh defensive or usually are defensive um even for warship or for uh, aircraft setup it gets a little trickier for warship setup it's pretty straightforward on dodge carriers you want mirage purify and barrier or bulletproof coating um so this is mirage bulletproof coating last stand works but i like barrier better um and then you're going to want purify so i don't know if I even yeah purify um restrain is really really effective against people that don't spend money because they don't have purified chips or they, you can get them without spending money. You just have to wait for the event. But purify is really necessary at higher levels of play. It's, it's a non-negotiable. You need purify in your carriers. The other stuff can be moved around. Okay. Um, because if you get restrained, your plane doesn't go at all. And that affects both plane, obviously atta aircraft attack setups, but it affects warship setups too. Cause like if you have, um, say a f14 tomcat in slot three but their venom was in slot one and restrains your slot three their you, your tomcat isn't going to go so you're not going to get critical hit you're not going to get reload and you're not going to get repair on your ships so you're just going to be hitting and hitting them back with your ships and it's going to hit like a wet pool noodle like it's not going to do anything um so purify is pretty much a non-negotiable at that level. You need it in order to get your to to counter restrain. Uh, if you remember my pirate video, almost taking out a twenty-seven without any equipment whatsoever. Um, yeah, you you need you need purify. That's the only non-negotiable chip that's on every single carrier that I build, no matter what. Um, and then the other two slots are conditional uh, on dodge carriers. I'll use mirage. Bulletproof coating is good. Shield is amazing on carriers like the Lincoln that have a ton of health. So it gives you a lot more health for the enemy to cut through. Um, last stand chips would be awesome on the on the Apocalypse or something that has last stand or, um, or overall blockade. Last stand is a good defensive chip. Um, but usually if you want to not go wrong in any case, uh, and just have a guaranteed this will be useful 
you want Purify, Barrier, and Shield. That'll make sure that even in an attack setup, you have defense on your carrier so that you can outlast the enemy a little bit. Um, you can block some of their damage. Um, yeah, shield, barrier, and purify. And you have to you purify, you make sure that at least your aircraft attacks. Even if they hit you with dispel and it takes away stimulant or something that really is what you need for damage, you're at least attacking. <laughs> you're, you're at least doing something. Um, so purify is the non-negotiable, and then the other two slots are based on the carrier's strengths. Mirage on dodge carriers plus shield, um, and that'll give you more health for them to cut through. Um, that kind of thing. On aircraft attack setups, I don't even know if I have chips on this. Yeah, okay, there are. Um, so precise strike is a decent option. Um, precise strike is a decent free chip, especially if you're using the U2A, because it doesn't have precise strike. And you want aircraft critical hit, you'll just do more damage. If you, uh, critical hit, I believe, um, is times two damage. So if you did 100 damage and scored a critical hit, 36% chance to do 200 damage. I believe, it, I believe it's times two. Um, so you'll do double damage, right? And then if you have MacArthur as a genius, um, you'll actually end up doing um, times three. So you'll do 300 damage because he gives you the plus one critical hit multiple, right? And say you're using a JFK, now it's, and that comes with plus one crit hit, crit hit multiple, and you have uh, MacArthur, guess what? Now you're doing times four damage and so on and so forth. If you have a red JFK, um, uh, red JFK SS, it's a plus two. So now you're doing times five damage. If you have a JFK radar, it's another plus one. That's times six damage. So you can see why it's very effective to have critical hit rate on. Um, so precise strike is good, especially if you're using the U2A sub, because you'll get precise strike on that slot one. In this case, I'm just using this as an example. You'll get precise strike on slot one here. Um, and then if I use... Um, yeah, so if I just decided to put the U2A there. So, like, remember the chip, precise strike. So now I'll have stimulant for more damage, Hawkeye for more accuracy, charge for more attack speed, and precise strike for critical hit. It's a really, really solid setup, right? And if you have an HMS resolution, which is this sub, which is another really popular one, all you need is the charge chip, and you have the same setup, right? HMS resolution, you have the stimulant, the Hawkeye, the precise strike, uh, but you don't have the charge, so then you would use a charge chip to make up for that, so that this slot has more attack speed. Okay, um, that's that you kind of make up for it and try to stack individual buffs. Like you don't want multiple stimulant. You don't want to put stimulant on if you're using the U2A, because you're just getting. You're it doesn't stack. You're not adding damage. The game takes whichever effect has more rounds. All right. So like for example, if if slot two, say I put precise strike here, right? And precise strike has three rounds of duration. If I go to submarine, if I go to the HMS resolution, I don't actually know what it is off the top of my head, but if I go to, come on. This is one round. Even if this is a higher value, it's not, but even if this was a higher value, it's going to use the chip because it's three rounds instead of the higher value, even if it's if it's at one round, if that makes sense. Um, so it's not worth having precise strike chip and precise strike skill on the same slot because it's only going to take one of them. It doesn't stack and double the crit rate. Um, it just takes whichever one has more rounds to it. All right, so that one's also that's that's another. <laughs> I think that's probably the biggest tip here. You want buffs. Um, the only re uh, you want in unique buffs. So like you want to make so your chips shouldn't overlap with the skill of the submarine that's in that spot. Um, there's also submarines that only do debuffs, and those are useful too for other reasons. Um, I can get into that, a bit, but I'll do that more so in a specific video to like the Capricornus carrier because its find weakness skill uses that. Um, but a general rule of thumb is you don't want to double up buffs. The only reason why you would double up buffs is if your trigger rate isn't 100% and the skill is super necessary for your build. So like, 
say your HMS resolution, say, you know, you're just polishing it. It's not SS yet. And the trigger rate is really low. It's like 40%. Okay. It makes sense to put on a chip that'll give you another 40 or 50% chance so that one of them will trigger. That makes sense. But if you have a hundred percent trigger rate on both, it makes no sense to double up the skill because they don't stack on each other. Um, so there's that. So you want unique buffs that'll all trigger. The more that are triggering, the better your setup is going to be in general. All right. Um, as far as chips for aircraft attack, again, purify, non-negotiable. Barrier is really, really good. Uh, precise strike is a good option there. Um, i trying to think of like any of the specialty chips. Shield is a, usually, if you're, um, a, something that people do a lot is if your chips are defensive your subs are offensive that's a good rule for aircraft attack carriers chips defense subs offense uh, because there's a lot of really cheap offensive subs so people tend to focus more on defensive chips um, but on warship setups uh, it's it's a little bit more complicated the chips are always going to want to be defensive uh, and your subs could be either depending on your setup um, on a Lincoln, you'll tend to see a lot of uh, triple debuff things like the Han class, um, the Trafalgar, uh, a couple other subs that just have debuffs. Um, and then they just have the chips that are buffing their carrier. I don't like that. I like doubling up and having more buffs on than using debuffs in general. For a general rule of thumb, I like more buffs than debuffs. Um, so like if I have three chips, that are all buffing my carrier, and then three three skills on a sub that are also all buffing my carrier. On a warship setup, that makes a lot of sense to me. I'm, I'm guaranteeing that I'll get to return fire instead of just getting wiped out before I even do damage. Um, so that's kind of why I use them the way that I do. Uh, for subs for the Nyx, like if I was picking, the Walrus is very good. Like if I go through the subs on here, I don't even know what subs I have on here. Um, Kilo class, actually not a bad option for Nyx for free players because bulletproof coating and mirage and repair are all very good skills, but it's only going to help you here. It's not going to help your warships, um, but it is, it's very good for starting, um, you know, at a 40 extra dodge in the beginning of the game is really good. Repair is good and bulletproof coating and extra 22% defense is really good. So the Kilo class would be a good option for the Nyx. Um, I don't know what some of these do this is a decent option because it has bulletproof coating you don't you wouldn't really it, it's a good option against other dodge carriers this is an option that a t aircraft attack people could even use because it gives you hawkeye which increases your accuracy this decreases their dodge so this is a good option against dodge carriers um, walrus class this is a good option for warship setup because it, see how many buffs it's giving to these warship slots um, the, that's a good option, but it's only buffing your carrier by one. That's decent. Walrus is good. Um, Zulu, uh, is kind of a hybrid. Looks like it gives you some defense and some offensive moves. I would use a stimulant chip on this and a precise strike chip on this, um, probably to give me more offense. And then my third one would be purify, obviously, because I put purify on everything. Um... Yeah, this is a debuff one, so this would be good on something like the Capricornus with the Find Weakness skill that increases your damage based on the amount of debuffs that are triggered on the enemy. Um, so this is good for that. This is more so to hinder your opponent's gameplay instead of enhance your own. That's another strategy. It's a good one, too. Um, but you have to know the game a little bit better to pull that off. Um, and I think that's, uh, for the most part, that's kind of the rundown on subs and chips. Um, a lot of it's situational. The only one that's the, the only chip that's not situational is Purify. You want that regardless of whatever you're running. Um, super, super important chip to have. Everything else is situational. I have the most luck usually with uh, Stimulant, or I'm not, I'm sorry, not Stimulant, Purify and Shield. And then the third one is based on the carrier. Mirage if it's a Dodge carrier. Barrier, if it's an aircraft attack carrier, bulletproof coating, last stand, any defensive chip um, that isn't Mirage, if it's a Dodge carrier or not a Dodge carrier. Um, 
I see this a lot too. People love putting Mirage on things that aren't dodge carriers. The only dodge carriers in the game that are effective at it um, are for free to play players. The Magic Shark is okay, but it's going to get outclassed really quickly. Um, the Lincoln, the Nyx, um, and the Capricornus. Those are really the only three things that you guys should be putting Mirage on. I see a lot of people throwing Mirage on like the Essex or the Soryu. It's pretty much useless on those. You're never going to get enough dodge to actually make it worth it. You might dodge one or two attacks, but you're never going to make it where it's just consistently dodging unless you have a skill that's enhancing that, like the Nyx, the Lincoln, or Magic Shark, the Fuijan. Um, yeah, any of those that actually use dodge or have dodge. Just putting Mirage on your warships isn't going to do anything. Um, people's It's just a wasted slot. People's accuracy is usually higher than just one Mirage chip. You really have to build into it to pull it off. So, um, I hope this helps. Uh, I didn't necessarily put anything on. This is, Again, this is a PvP thing, uh, PvP video. I... I'm not going over how to increase their class and upgrade them in this video. Um, I can make another video if it's needed, but a lot of people know how to upgrade them. Um, you know, I mean, it literally tells you, you need this much of this material, this much of this material, this much, you know, you need another gold phantom chip to take it to five. You know, um, it tells you what to do. The game tells you how to increase, how to level up the things. Um, so this is more of a PvP video on what to put on your carrier, not necessarily how to make chips, get chips, or build chips. It's just what specific ones to use. So I hope this info helps. Um, I am going to try. I think I have enough time to make the aircraft one today as well. Um, so if I do, then you will see all three of these videos posted today. Um, I do these all in one take. Obviously, I don't edit. I just kind of talk. <laughs> Uh, make the videos, hopefully they help, and if you have any questions, shoot me a message in-game um, on server 420, play on its dip, um, and if you, yeah, if you need any help, let me know, if you put comments, like, subscribe to the channel, it'll help out a lot. Thanks so much, guys. Have a good one. Bye.